wife, Carl's wife Iris, died in 2015. She lived until her 90s. And Catherine was her only child. Now, I think naming the, the fallen and telling some of their stories seems really important. You know, to give this life. In some ways, when you look at 1.1 million people, it almost, it's, it's, the numbers are overwhelming, but there's a risk of depersonalizing the war and, and the sacrifices. And so when we tell the stories, we remember that these are, and these were real, real people. Um, they were real children and brothers and sisters, husbands, parents, church members. They were loved and they were nurtured. They had dreams. They had, in some cases, children of their own. And most importantly, what I, what I feel needs to be said is each one of the 1.1 million people like Carl who have died in war are children of God. And a sacred word. <laughs> that needs to be remembered by all of us, right? That they are children of God. I think there are lots of reasons for us to, to, to remember, a lot of good reasons to celebrate Memorial Day. We honor Carl, and we honor all the fallen, all those lives lost in war, when we remember them. When we, we, when we remember, it says, you are loved, right? You matter. You're respected. You're appreciated. You're important. And when we forget, we, we dishonor people. Right? To remember also helps, to remember their sacrifice also helps us appreciate the value of living in this country, right? And enjoying the, the, free, the various freedoms we enjoy and the opportunities that are ours. Somehow when you remember all the lives lost, it makes us appreciate more our lives today. Another reason to remember is because when we remember the sacrifice of others, it, it inspires us to do our duty to further the legacy, right? To make sure we're each doing our part to make our homeland a great place to live and a great place to pass on to the next generation. So all these things are going through my mind, and then all, maybe lastly, something very important to each one of us is when we look at the sacrifice of so many, it, it can remind us of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for each one of us. Because it was Jesus who said, to lay down, greater love has no one this, Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. When we look at the sacrifices of so many who have died protecting others, uh, dying to give others a better life, we can see in that the example of, of Jesus Christ his, and his sacrificial love. So it's good. It's good to remember now I'm sure that that many who died were, were not fighting for high and, and noble purposes. Not everybody was there uh, in war trying to emulate Jesus Christ. Probably not. Some people were drafted and maybe didn't really want to be there. Some people didn't know what they were signing up for. Uh, some folks maybe just trying to make a, a career and, and have a job and do something with their lives and get out of the town they grew up in. Right. All that's true. Right? But each one, each one deserves to be remembered. Everybody deserves to be remembered. And it's also true that sometimes um, we can question the wisdom of the decisions that sent our men and women to war. There's a place for that. You know, did our leaders make decisions about war with the mind of Christ? They're mere mortals, you know, after all. So that's true. And most importantly, war is not God's best for us. And it's not what God 
intends for us to, to experience in the new heaven and the new earth that Jesus Christ is ushering in and will one day bring to completion. There will be no more war, right? As we heard from the prophet Isaiah. Nonetheless, those who have preached, who experienced war and those who studied war will tell you that there are an abundance of stories of men and women dying in war in ways that demonstrate the love that Jesus preached and modeled for us. And I came across this in another sermon, and I wanted to share it with you. I'll just read some of this. Those who volunteer for dangerous assignments or take up the most dangerous position to give the rest of their unit a greater chance. Those who have shielded others with their own bodies as bullets flew and the bombs went off. Those who charge an enemy position to try to protect their friends by eliminating the enemy or drawing fire away from their friends. Those who have demonstrated a greater concern for those they love than for their own life. There may even be those that are here today only because someone else took the hit and paid the price instead of them. It is this very reason that causes the vast majority of those who have done some heroic deed and survived it to downplay it as just doing their duty. They were only doing what others were also doing for the same reasons, and some of those were not coming home alive. So one of the questions for us today, I think, is how is God calling you and me to lay down our lives for our friends? What's the sacrifice that God's calling each of us to make? Memorial Day gives us the, the opportunity to remember what Jesus did for us, thinking about this, he took Jesus also was a hometown boy. Right? You think about that? Grew up in Nazareth. Right? He was a hometown boy. He was raised in the faith. Jesus devoted his life to doing good works. He was loved and, and he loved others. He had a father. Right? A loving father. He had a mother who loved him. He had friends who loved him. Jesus told his disciples, remember these words, we heard of this a minute ago, you are my friends. You are my friends. I have called you friends. And Jesus willingly put himself in harm's way for his friends. Like the heroes that we remember, Jesus laid down his life for his friends. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He laid down his life. What's different, though, about Jesus is that he also died for his enemies. The Bible says, as you can see here in Romans, God chose his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for the enemies, too. See, sin makes us enemies against God. Sin's not just bad behavior, but it's being in a, in a in being an enemy of God, being opposed to God's will, fighting against God. Saint Paul said he was sinner number one. But you may remember this verse from First Timothy, chapter one, verse fifteen. Paul says, "Here's a word you can take to heart. You can depend on this. Jesus Christ came into the world." To save sinners, I'm proof, public sinner number one. Right? You ever think about it? You're public sinner number one, and still Jesus died for you. We can't imagine our soldiers fighting and dying for our enemies, right? That's hard, that'd be hard to hard to take. We fight for America. We fight for our allies, not for our, our enemies. But the mission of Jesus was different. He was fighting for his friends and his enemies in very unorthodox ways. So Jesus went behind the enemy lines. God himself became a man in Jesus Christ to then willingly die as a substitute for each of us. Jesus died for each one of us. He gave his life for us so that we could be forgiven and reconciled with God the Father. 
and we remember Jesus today. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, everything changes. In more ways than I can share with you in any one sermon, but let me give you just a few things that we can experience. We experience the love of God the Father. That's a big thing. I think a lot of us would like to experience that love right now. And in Jesus, we can. In Jesus, we're, when we put our trust and faith in Him, we're forgiven. We do. We have peace with God. We're reconciled. We're set free from the past. We're transformed by the Holy Spirit. We become more like Jesus. We become more loving. Right? When the Holy Spirit gets a hold of us, we accept, as after we've accepted Jesus, Jesus, through that Holy Spirit, begins to, to teach us and enable us to love our friends in a way that would reflect Jesus and his love for us. We can lay down our lives for our friends because of the love that Jesus has for us. And we can lay down our lives for our enemies too. Something we can only do by the grace of God. Jesus gave his life for each one of us. It's an awesome thing. Tomorrow we're going to remember those who died in, in military service, that's a great thing for us to do. And probably all have our own little plans for tomorrow, but hopefully part of it will be to, to, to take a moment to appreciate, to remember, bless you, those who have given that, made that ultimate sacrifice. But my hope too is that tomorrow you and I will take time to remember Jesus. To thank God for Jesus. To thank God for his sacrifice for each of us. Right? To appreciate him. To commit ourselves to, to his mission and carrying it on. And to just recommit ourselves to Jesus Christ. Tomorrow's, any day is a good day to do that. But tomorrow will be a good day too. So we'll do it. Now as we conclude, we're going we're gonna to wrap up things differently today. We're going to do something a little, un, speaking of unorthodox, we're going to do something a little unorthodox. But y'all look like you're up to it. All right. We're going to have some time of prayer in the cemetery. And if Steve, by the way, Steve, Steve's here. I see Vander Linden and Doug Lang. Where's Doug? I saw Doug. He's here. These guys are co-leaders of our cemetery team. And with the help of several others, they cleaned up the cemetery yesterday. And so we're going to go out there, we're going to pray, and if you can help me find it, Steve, I'd like to, to if, if, if possible, for us to, to gather around Carl's grave, if you can find it. If we can't find it, we'll go to the flagpole. But we've got a prayer in the bulletin, and when we get out there, we're going to pray together this prayer. We're going to sing together. The, old, the hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth. I will sing it, just going to lead us in that. And then when we finish, you're welcome to, to stay in the cemetery and, and wander around. We've, thanks, to, thanks to Steve and Doug, we've got little flags that mark the graves of our veterans. And if you, if you look and pay attention, you may be able to find some of the folks that I mentioned earlier that we think probably died in, the, in combat. So... You can stay in the cemetery and pray for, for their families, and for loved ones, and, and pray for peace. Can we do that? I told you it's kind of weird, isn't it? A little different. And if you talk to, if, if you find somebody that needs to have a, a flag at their grave, and talk to Steve or, or, or Doug, and we'll, we'll add that. But I think this would be a, you know, a special time for us. Yeah, so, sorry, I want to do just a bit of a sure. transition. This wasn't planned, but I noticed Matthew James is here. I did not know you were going to be here. You're going to do something really big this summer, uh, and I'd like to pray over you before we go. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, so <laughs> Matthew James is a, you'll be a junior, is that right? So, oh, sophomore at Gettysburg College. He's going to serve a church this summer uh, working with the youth program in... 
in Maryland. Uh, and so many of you have uh, been a part of Matthew's life uh, for the past uh, 15 years or so, probably. Uh, and so we'd like to commission you and send you. So if you all, would you come up here so we can pray over you? Uh, as uh, <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of students doing internships this summer, but I think Matthew's the only one that will be serving at church this summer, and that's a really big deal. We want to pray a blessing over him, uh, at, and then we'll go out to the cemetery. Uh, so at, uh, if you want to stretch out your arm, uh, and we'll pray the spirit over Matthew. Uh, Lord, we give you thanks for calling your people into ministry in all ways, shapes, and forms. And Lord, we're all ministers uh, and, and to some extent, uh, and yet uh, you called some uh, to um, work in the church. And Lord, we thank you for uh, this calling that you've put on Matthew's heart uh, through coincidence or uh, through divine intervention. Uh, we pray that Matthew will receive it fully, uh, that he will serve with grace and uh, honor this summer, uh, that you'll put some good mentors in his life, that you'll uh, allow him to share the love of Jesus uh, so that the students in Maryland would be able to hear it from him like they may not from anybody else. Uh, we know that uh, you go with him, ahead of him. Uh, and that your spirit is uh, readying the people in this place for his ministry. Uh, Lord, we give you thanks for Matthew, for his family, and for this church, uh, who will, will pray for him through this summer. Now, Father, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, to the cemetery.